This is the table of uh, some common fatty acids. You don't have to memorize any of those. This table is found in uh, chapter 18, uh, table sheet, and uh, you can have it in the exam. Any additional fatty acid that is not found in this table, I'll make sure that you have its structure in the question. All what you need to know is uh, the uh, those different fatty acids in there. This, uh, this is their structures and you can uh, easily differentiate between the saturated ones and the unsaturated ones. You also need to pay attention to the number of the double bonds. For example, the linolenic acid, it does have three double bonds compared to two double bonds of the linoleic acid, and the oleic acid does have one double bond in there. Now, um, fatty acids are not synthesized in the body. So in order to obtain fatty acids, we obtain those from the food that we eat. There are uh, two essential polyunsaturated fatty acids that are very important to our body. And these are the linole linoleic acid and the linolenic acid. Both of those, they are 18 carbons and their structure is found in this table over here. So, uh, linolenic acid, this is an omega-3 fatty acid. So, this one is an omega-3 uh, fatty acid, okay? And uh, the linoleic acid, it is an omega-6 uh, fatty acid. These omega fatty acids, we uh, can get them when we consume fish, uh, fish oil, um, eggs, uh, tree nuts, all of those, they are rich in, uh, in omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. So the first type of simple saponifiable lipid is a triglyceride, okay? And uh, what are these? These are simple saponifiable lipids and they are made up of fats and oils. There's a difference between a fat and an oil. A fat comes from the animals. Oils, they are obtained from a plant and fish source. Um, fats are solids at room temperature. Oils are liquids at room temperature. So um, from the definition, we've talked about fats, we've talked about oils in there. So um, since oils, these are liquids at, at room temperature. So we said that um, since they are liquids, they, um, they do have unsaturated fatty acids in them. Um, for fats, these are solids at room temperature. So uh, this means that these are made up of a high degree of saturated fatty acids. So fats contain saturated fatty acids, uh, no double bonds compared to oils that contain unsaturated fatty acids, this means that they do have double bonds in them. So the structure, the simple structure of fats and oils, we said that these are called the triglycerides in there. These are made up of a glycerol backbone. Um, and that glycerol backbone is connected to three fatty acids. The fatty acids of the triglyceride, they are not the same. Um, rarely they are the same. Normally they are different. And uh, the process by which glycerol um, reacts with fatty acids and make the triglyceride in there, uh, we call it um, an esterification reaction because after all, what you're making is an ester bond. So this is what uh, happens. You are uh, starting with a glycerol. What is a glycerol? A glycerol is a uh, three-carbon structure that has three OHs, three alcohols in there, okay? So you do have three alcohol functional groups. So this is a tri oh. This means that you have three alcohols in there, and this is the structure. You are responsible to know the structure of the glycerol. So... You need one molecule of glycerol 
And that molecule of the glycerol will react with the three fatty acids. Now, each of the fatty acids have an OH in them. And we said that in normal triglycerides, the fatty acids are rarely the same. They are not the same. But here in this example, I'm giving them to be the same, okay? Like steric acid molecule, and I'm using three of those. This is an esterification reaction. So when you want to form a triglyceride um, uh, in there, it's called an esterification reaction. So let's write it down. And we've talked about esterification reaction before esterification reaction we've talked about esterification reaction and we said that it's a reaction where you react an alcohol plus an acid and you're going to make an ester this is why we call it an esterification reaction so in the process we said that the alcohol normally loses a hydrogen and the acid loses the um, the OH, okay? And the acid loses the OH. So at the end, your byproduct is going to be water. And you will be losing a three water molecules because you do have three hydrogens for the three alcohols. And you have three OHs for the three fatty acids in there, okay? And so you're going to end up having three water molecules as a byproduct. And what you will be doing is you will be making an ester bond, which is the carbonyl CO bond in there. So this is the bond that you will be making between the carbonyl and the oxygen. This is the new bond in there, which we're going to be to call the ester bond. So this one over here is the ester bond. And we are making the ester bond. This is the new bond in there. Okay. This means that if I go backwards, remember that esters, they undergo hydrolysis. If you add water, you are going to break down all of these ester bonds back to the um, alcohol and the carboxylic acid. So this is how um, triglycerides are made. Triglycerides, um, these are made from the reaction of a glycerol and the three fatty acids. Triglycerides are the first type of saponifiable lipids. These are considered to be simple lipids in there, okay? And those lipids are made up of uh, three ester groups. So when we want to abbreviate a glycer triglyceride in there, we will abbreviate it as a circle. And then you have the three tails in there. So these are the three tails in there. The circle actually comes from the glycerol part. And then you have those three tails in there, which are the hydrophobic chain. These are the carbon chain in there. Okay, so that is the abbreviation of the, um, the triglyceride structure. Now, with respect to the reactions of the triglycerides, we have uh, three reactions that we already talked about in earlier chapters, um, and these are reactions of esters. So you have here a triglyceride, and that triglyceride is made up of a reaction with three different fatty acids. You can see that the fatty acids here are different, and the glycerol. You made your triglyceride in there. This reaction is called saponification, and it is the process of how they make soap. So they start with a triglyceride, um, and um, they react it in presence of a strong base. Any reaction of an ester will always target the ester bond. So the ester bond, in this case, will be broken. So the ester bond in there will be broken. Remember this reaction when we talked about saponification? We said that with saponification, what you are doing, you are breaking the ester bond in there. And um, you are going to add, after all, we are adding the OH in there, right? So on this hydrogen, oxygen, sorry, over here, we are going to add the hydrogen. So we will go back to our glycerol. So you're going to end up uh, going back and forming the glycerol in there 
where you added a hydrogen, we're adding three molecules of this base. So we have three hydrogens in there. The hydrogens go on the oxygen. We generate back our glycerol. And then the oxygen, we still have an oxygen in there, three oxygens. Each one of these carbonyls will pick an oxygen. So we would say that on this carbonyl in there, we're going to add the O. We're going to add the oxygen. So you're going to end up having the O negative on every single carbonyl. We already know that when oxygen forms a single bond, then it's a charge is what is negative in there. And for every negative, you should have a positive counter ion to balance. And here in this case, my positive counter ion is my sodium. So over uh, here, I need to have sodium ions that balance every single oxygen in there. So what I'm forming here is the salt of the fatty acid. This is what I am forming. This one is the salt of the fatty acid. And because that salt is made up of more than 10 carbons, then I'm going to call it a soap. So soaps are made up of 10 carbons or more. Okay, pay attention. 10, 12 carbons or more, we call them soap molecules. If it is less than 10 carbons, then this is not a soap. This is considered to be the salt of the acid. So uh, these are the salts of the acid, and these salts, normally we name them based on the uh, fatty acid that we start with. So here we are starting with a palmitic acid. If you look at the table, this is the structure of the palmitic acid. Then we will name it a palmitate. Just we um, we drop the ic acid and we add an ATE. This is going to be an oleic acid. So that is the oleic acid in there. So it's going to be an oleate. Drop the ic acid, add an ATE. And this one is going to be the linoleic um, uh, um, acid. So drop the ic acid and add an ATE at the end. And these are going to be three soap molecules there. So saponification reaction. When you're doing saponification, your product is always going to be, it's the breaking down of the triglyceride. So in presence of a base, so your product is going to be a glycerol and three fatty acids. The fatty acids would, or three soap of the fatty acids, I'm sorry, three salts of the fatty acid in there, which are soap molecules. So these fatty acid, uh, this, the salt of the fatty acid, those are going to uh, uh, depend on what type of fatty acid that you start, you start with, okay? Um, the rule says that um, the, uh, the type of the uh, base that you use in this process will determine the, uh, the property of the soap that you're going to end up with at the end. Because we know that we have liquid soaps and we have solid soaps. So um, if you uh, start with the uh, sodium, uh, sodium uh, hydroxide, so if you have a sodium hydroxide, then the soap that you're going to end up with is going to be a hard soap. Um, and if you start with a potassium hydroxide, then the soap that you are going to start to end up with is going to be a soft soap or a liquid soap. And this is how they make uh, shaving creams and uh, uh, liquid uh, soap preparation. They start with, uh, with potassium, with KOH instead of NaOH. Another reaction that triglycerides undergo is hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the reverse of esterification. So remember with esterification uh, to make triglyceride, we started with an alcohol and three fatty acids, and we ended up making triglycerides. So this is the opposite. You start with a triglyceride in there, you add water in presence of an acid. This is the process, by the way, of how fats and oils they are digested uh, in, in our body. They are digested through an enzyme lipase, which uh, does the same job as water in presence of an acid. And uh, you start over here with uh, triglyceride. And triglycerides, they are going to hydrolyze, meaning that the ester bond is going to be broken. 
when the ester bond is broken, all what you're doing over here is you are adding a hydrogen to the oxygen into the carbonyl. You're going to add an OH. This is water. Okay. All what you're doing here, you're adding water. So you're returning back to the glycerol and the three different fatty acids that you used in order to make this uh, triglyceride. Is another reaction of triglyceride is the hydrogenation. And uh, uh, this in this reaction, we are adding hydrogen in presence of a metal catalyst. It's just as a uh, revision, we've talked about uh, alkene reactions. Um, and uh, how alkene reactions, they hydrogenate in presence of a metal catalyst. Here, the metal that I'm using is nickel. So uh, the hydrogenation always targets the double bond um, in there. And uh, simply what you're doing is you are breaking the pi bond and you are adding hydrogens in there. So your product is going to be a single bond. It's going to be an alkene, alkene instead of an alkene. So you start with an alkene. And you end up with an alkane. Your reactive part of the molecule is going to be the double bond. So that double bond is going to change into a single bond. Um, we're gonna, uh, uh, we are going to apply this to the fatty acids that we are using. So uh, over here, we do have a triglyceride. Um, the uh, hydrogenation will target the double bonds of the triglycerides. Okay, or of the fatty acids that uh, that make the triglyceride. Um, the uh, number of hydrogens that I use normally is equivalent to the number of the double bonds that I have. Um, and I always, when I start hydrogenating, I start hydrogenating from the bottom to the top. Okay, so from the bottom to the top. You finish hydrogenating one uh, fatty acid uh, before you go ahead and you hydrogenate the next one. So here I am using two molecules of hydrogen in the presence of nickel. Pay attention that if there is no metal catalyst, the reaction will not happen. So that nickel is essential for this reaction to proceed. Um, uh, in this case, I'm using two molecules of uh, the uh, hydrogen. So over here, I do have two molecules or two double bonds. So this means that I need to hydrogenate those two double bonds in there, and the double bonds are going to change into a single bond. So this means that I'm going to add two hydrogens on this carbon and two hydrogens on this carbon. This is what I am doing, okay? Every mole will add a hydrogen to every carbon. So here we're going to add two hydrogens on this carbon, and on this carbon over here we're going to add two hydrogens in there. So I will eliminate the double bond. And I'm going to end up getting my alkane. You have to finish hydrogenating all the double bonds of one fatty acid before you go to the second fatty acid um, and hydrogenate its double bonds. So pay attention to, to that. Here for this uh, triglyceride, in order to hydrogenate all the three double bonds that I have, I need the three moles of hydrogen in presence of nickel there. Okay, but here I'm using two. This means that I'm only hydrogenating uh, two uh, double bonds. So what does hydrogenation do? Hydrogenation decreases the uh, degree of unsaturation, meaning that the amount of the double bonds that we have. Here we're starting with an unsaturated um, triglyceride, and that unsaturated triglyceride, because it does have double bonds in there, it is uh, going to be an oil, okay? That is going to be an, uh, an oil, so it's going to be in a liquid form. So that is going to be liquid. When you hydrogenate um, in there, the uh, you are decreasing the amount of the double bond. So decreasing the amount of the double bond is going to change the oil into a uh, fat, into solid in there. So, and this is the process that we use in order to make margarines from oil. Um, if we do complete hydrogenation, this is not a complete hydrogenation. Complete hydrogenation means that I am eliminating all the double bonds. So if I want to eliminate all the double bonds here, I'm going to use a three moles of hydrogen in presence of nickel. In this case, what I'm going to end up getting 
is a um, is a fat or a hard and a waxy product. So I go from a liquid product to a uh, solid product in that case. If you do partial hydrogenation like this one, partial hydrogenation will result in a smooth and a creamy product. So as a summary, triglycerides undergo three reactions. The first one is the saponification in presence of a base. You get the fatty acid salt. If you do the reaction uh, in an acidic medium, this is hydrolysis, then you get the, the actual fatty acids in there. Um, and uh, if you hydrogenate the triglyceride, then you're going to get a sa saturated triglyceride. Of course, the, um, the number of the double bonds that you hydrogenate depends on how many moles of hydrogen you are using. So let's have an example. Um, if I give you this question, how many triglycerides can be made from a stearic and an oleic acid? So here, what I did is I gave you the two fatty acids in there, and I ask you, okay, um, I need all the triglycerides that are a combination of stearic and oleic acid. These are the two fatty acids that I want uh, to make the triglyceride from. So what are my options in here? My options simply is, uh, of course, all the triglycerides have uh, this uh, form. It's a glycerol that is connected to three fatty acids. I cannot use other than these two fatty acids, so let's make a combination. I can have, for example, uh, two stearic um, acids in there. So I don't even need, uh, whenever you have a question like this, you don't even need to know the structure of the stearic and the oleic uh, fatty acid. All what you need to do is just figure out how many triglycerides I can make from these two fatty acids in there. And then the other one can be the oleic acid. Now, it's not telling me I need these two in every single one of them. So let's go ahead and do the combination. So I cannot have stearic acid for um, all the fatty acids in there. Okay. So I can have here, for example, stearic um, acid. And I can have two oleic acids. So an oleic here and an oleic there. Okay, this is another possibility. Um, another possibility is to have a steric here and a steric there. Okay, and then oleic um, in the middle. And this is going to be, all of these right now are three different triglycerides in there. Okay, um, I can have an oleic here. And then a steric here. And then another oleic. Um, I believe that these are all the combinations that, that I can have. So, so far, um, from these two fatty acids, I can have one, two, three, and four different. I can have four different triglycerides. Okay. So this is one question in there. Um, another one over here is, um, okay, here I'm asking how fats are, um, okay, how are fats and oils structurally similar and how they are different? Okay, let's fill in the blanks in here. So we know that fats and oils, these are both triglycerides. What type of triglyceride? These are simple triglycerides, okay? So these are simple and saponifiable. Uh, triglycerides that contain a glycerol backbone and how many fatty acids? We have three fatty acids in there. Okay, that's what makes it a triglyceride. Um, we normally represent the triglycerides, as I told you, by uh, this is a schematic drawing there. Now, uh, fats um, contain, uh, whenever we're talking about fats in there, um, fats contain more saturated fatty acids. So, of course, they have more saturated fatty acids. means that fats, they don't have double bonds in them. And this is why um, they appear as solids compared to oils that have less uh, or th that have more unsaturation in them. Um, and they appear as liquid. So fats, they contain more saturated fatty acids um, than unsaturated fatty acids. 
and oils contain um okay we do have over here a um, a blank that we need to fill they contain less of course saturated fatty acids this is why oils they are liquids and fats they are solids okay um fatty acid then unsaturated fatty acid this causes uh, fat to be a solid so this causes fats to be solids at room temperature while oils they are liquids under the same condition another example that also i can ask draw the structure of the triglyceride so what i would do is I would give you um, the glycerol and I would give you the three different fatty acids and I would ask you, okay, go ahead and draw the triglyceride in there. Now, um, if I didn't give you those three fatty acids, I would give you the names of these fatty acids so you can go to the table, take those out and write them down, okay? Um, and uh, normally the uh, uh, the order that I would give you I would be very specific to tell you um, which um, which acid is on which carbon. Normally, whenever you want to uh, number the glycerol, that will be carbon number one. This is carbon number two, and this is carbon number three. Mm -hmm. So I would tell you that the mystric acid will react with carbon number one of the glycerol and so forth so that you would know how to arrange those triglycerides there, okay? Um, so the structure here, draw the structure of the triglyceride that contains one mystric acid, one palmitic, and one oleic acid. To do this, this is an ester. You are reacting an alcohol and an acid, so you're gonna form an ester. So in order to form an ester over here, um, you are going to, uh, let's highlight, the alcohol is going to lose a hydrogen and the acid is going to lose an OH. So each one of those is going to lose a water molecule. So at the end, you're going to end up having three water molecules in there and then combine everything together in order to form that ester bond in there. And to draw the structure of the triglyceride, of course, plus your byproduct in there, which is the three water water molecules there okay another example over here um for the hydrogenation reaction how many hydrogen molecules are needed to react with the triglyceride molecule before uh, below for its complete hydrogenation complete hydrogenation this means that my uh, fatty acids need to become saturated so the fatty acids should become uh, saturated. So this means that I need to react every single double bond. Check how many double bonds you have, guys. Here you do have one double bond and another double bond in there. Okay, so two double bonds. This means that I need two uh, moles or two hydrogen molecules are needed. So I need two hydrogen uh, molecules are needed okay or you can say two moles of hydrogens or two moles of hydrogen is needed okay um are needed in general terms identify the products of the reactions below let's select all that apply so whenever you're doing uh, acid hydrolysis let's agree on something that fats and oils, they are both triglycerides. And if they are triglycerides, then their product is going to be the same. So if you are doing an acid hydrolysis for a fat or an acid hydrolysis for the oil, the product is going to be its hydrolysis. So it's acidic medium, since they said acid hydrolysis. So I need to get the fatty acid. So fatty acid is going to be the product and the glycerol is going to be the product. It's going to be for each one of them. Okay, saponification for a fat or a saponification for the oil, it's going to leave me the same product in there. And that is going to be uh, the salt of the fatty acid. Okay, these are going to be the salt of the fatty acid and of course the glycerol in there. So the salt of the fatty acid and the, uh, the glycerol in there. 
The only difference between fats and oils, both of them are triglycerides, but the only difference is uh, in the composition of the fatty acid. Because fats, they contain saturated fatty acids, and oils, they contain unsaturated fatty acids. Both, they have a glycerol in there, but the type of the fatty acid is different between fats and oils, and this is why the uh, appearance of the fat is different than that of the oil. Fat is a solid, and oil is a, um, is a liquid.